Yo, this is Terrence Gaines, a.k.a. Brother Tech. And this is Nika Monfort, a.k.a. Tech Savvy Diva. And welcome back to the Snob OS Show, the show for Apple snobs, where we talk all things Apple and then some. We are back. We are back a day late, but we are back. Well, let me not say a day late, because if you're listening to this regular, you're listening to it on Friday. So it really doesn't <laughs> matter when we record as long as it comes out on Friday. So uh, like I said, we just want to thank you all for joining this week's show. This is episode 256 of the Snob OS show. So we definitely want to thank you for your continued support. If you want to support us financially, we're always going to make sure we give you that option. So if you do want to do that, go to patreon.com forward slash snob OS cast and join the Patreon community. And in exchange for joining the community, we definitely give you a little bit of a hookup. We have a live show. So if you are part of the Patreon supporters, you get the show live. That means you get it early and we give you some exclusive content that you will not hear on this show. So we do that as a thank you for supporting the show financially. So having said that, we're going to get right into this week's show. As always, we start with the lowdown. And just yesterday or the day before, iOS 17.4 dropped. I did not think it was going to drop this week because I opened up the news earlier this week and they were talking about a release candidate. So I assumed there was going to be at least another week before they announced the actual public version. But no, iOS 17.4 is here. Also, macOS 14.4 Sonoma, watchOS 10.4. HomePod 17.4 and some other stuff. TV OS came out. Vision OS 1.1 came out, but most of that stuff is just bug fixes. So I kind of only included the OSs or the updates that have some information that you all need to know about. So we're going to start with iOS 17.4. Uh, basically, new emojis, like always. They've got some new emoji. So if that's your thing, <laughs> definitely check out the new emojis in 17.4. Um, the ability for Apple podcasts, if you want to include transcripts in different languages, English, French, German, and Spanish, you can now do that. You can provide those transcripts. A couple other things, Siri can announce some messages in any support language. So if you, you know, speak another language or you're bilingual or you know, you just want to make sure Siri is talking back to you in the language that you talk to it. Uh, Siri can now do that. Uh, you get a little bit more battery health info. You get battery cycle count, manufacture date, and some couple other things. If you go to battery battery health, when before it was just like battery percentage, and I think it was one or two other features. Now you get a little bit more information. Uh, this would be interesting. Apple Cash without Apple Pay. So basically anywhere that um, any merchant that offers contactless payments, you can use Apple Pay. But there are some, I think Walmart is one of them to mm -hmm. where they do accept contactless payments. Like if you take your credit card and hold it over the machine mm -hmm. and they may take Google Pay or Android Pay for whatever reason, they do not accept Apple Pay. So Apple has figured they out a workaround. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but uh, whatever the issue is, Apple figured out a workaround. And basically what it does is with the Apple Cash, you got to use Apple Cash and it'll create a virtual credit card number that you can then copy and paste when you hold your phone over the or your watch over the POS. So you hold your phone over the POS. So basically you open up... Um, Apple Cash, like you're going to pay normally, put mm -hmm. it over there. It'll create a virtual number and then you copy and paste that into the wallet. And then that's how it works. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it works like that. Or I can't remember if it works that way or if you have to do it ahead of time, like get the virtual number and then put it in Apple Cash and then hold it over. I think that's even better. Yeah, so, I think you have to get the virtual number first. Get the virtual I number first, so. copy and paste it into Apple Cash and then do the Apple Pay to put over the uh, point of sale machine. So, but all that's being said, uh, Apple's figured out a workaround to use Apple Pay in places that don't normally accept Apple Pay. Another one is Apple Music Playlists update. You'll be able to add music to Apple Music Playlists library and Apple Music Classical 
after identifying them via music recognition. So if you say you hear a song playing in the background and you say, hey, Siri, what song is this? Once she identifies the song, you can then immediately add it to a playlist or Apple Cla Music Classical one before you can just hit play. Once you hit play, then you can listen to the music. But now immediately after it recognizes the music, you can automatically add it to your uh, music playlists. So um, what's yeah. interesting is when I did this update, it asked me if I wanted to enable stolen the stolen um, protection. Uh -huh. And I was thinking, I was like, when I did the last update, it didn't ask me. So I'm like, I'm wondering if, because I didn't set it up when I did the last update, mm -hmm. it asked me again. But I don't remember it asking me before. It did but not I ask you the first time. Um, no. You had the first, when they first announced, when they first released it, you had to go in and turn on the device protection because that was one of my hookups for that week. Oh, that, that is right. Right, right. But now they're asking you pro or prompting you. Yeah. To do you want to turn it on or not? And while uh, speaking of which, um, they've added a benefit to turning on stolen device protection. I didn't put in the show notes, but basically before with the stolen device protection, there was a delay. Like if somebody stole your phone and tried to run up your card or something like that, there was a delay before they can actually do the transactions. Now there's no delay to where it's like automatically shuts everything down. So you don't, mm -hmm. it doesn't wait for to, are you sure this is you? We're not sure. It's like, nope, we don't know. So we shutting everything We're down. We're not playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's really weird because I, I had, after the hookup, I remember you saying you had to turn it on. Now it's like coming back and I forgot. And so when I did this upgrade, um, it asked me and I was like, did I not have this on already? I was so confused. Like, <laughs> did they, I was like, I'm pretty sure they did this with 17.3. Like, why is it now just popping up with 17.4? I was so confused, but that makes sense. And the other thing is, which is funny, is the update with the um, Apple Podcasts, the transcripts. Uh -huh. In grad school, one of, I took this um, HCI course. Everybody called it a, a mini PhD because it was a lot that went into this uh, class. And one of the things that I did was my one of my proposals for a project. No, one of the um, one of the projects that I did in the class. It was actually to do to add translations to um, Apple Podcasts because the whole uh -huh. thing was, you know, you can go into like. Um, uh, car mode, like on Spotify, if you uh -huh. put your phone a certain way, you connect. And I was like, Apple Podcasts doesn't do that. So you had to do like the research and compare and contrast and all that kind of stuff. And one, and that particular project was implementing transcripts on podcasts so that when you drive or when you're doing something else, if, if you impaired, you know, basically doing that interaction, uh -huh. that human interaction to be able to do the translation. So Technically, I think Apple should run me a little check or something. <laughs> yeah, you should have patented because I it was ahead quick. of the game mm -hmm. with this whole thing, right? <laughs> yep, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, they need to, to run you some some change for coming up with that idea, you know. But students, you know, students and employees, if you come up with yeah. something great, it becomes property of the university or property yeah. of the company. So absolutely right. Probably the most notable or most talked about um, addition to iOS 17.4 is it enables third party app stores, but only for the European Union. So you and then Apple's trick is you have to have an Apple ID that's registered in the European Union or a EU mm -hmm. country and you have to be in the vicinity in the area. So Say, for instance, you're an EU user and you say, oh, I want to try a third party app store. Mm -hmm. You have to originate from the EU and you have to be like physically like a, in one yeah. of the countries that are in the EU. Right. What they call a geofence. That's what they call it. So if you if you have a third party app store or whatever oh. and you set all this stuff up and then you travel to America for a month. There's like a, a a period. I can't remember if it's a week, 15 days, mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. But whatever that time period, after that time period elapses, 
Can't nah, use you, it. So you can't go over there, get a phone, set it all up for the third party app store, and then move to and America. Come, mm. Yeah, no, no, they 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 lock it down. It but, was like we thought of all of the little crafty <laughs> tricks that you may try to uh-huh. get over on us. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So, but like I said, if you want to jump through all those hoops, and for my EU brothers and sisters who may be listening, now you have access to uh, add third party app stores on your iPhone. The question is. Will that ever come to the United States? Don't know. I'm guessing probably not. No. But I think most iOS iPhone users are okay with that. Maybe there's yeah. just a few that just want to do stuff just because. Contrarian folks. <laughs> now you can move to the EU and do it. <laughs> <laughs> so like I said, um, in addition to iOS 17.4, there were some other releases, macOS Sonoma. Uh, pretty much the main thing in macOS Sonoma is new emoji as well. Um, podcast episode text can be read in full. We talked about that. Um, business updates in messages for business, unless you get updates that you've opted into like order status, flight notifications, fraud alerts, and other transactions from trusted businesses. So like if you, Nika, we mentioned in the pre-show, we're doing some traveling over the next couple of days. And if the company, whether it be an airline, whether it be a hotel, whether it be transportation, if they... And if they do like text messages for like uh, flight updates or gate changes, you know, um, this new update uh, in business, business updates and me- messages for business, mm-hmm. lets you get those updates that you've opted into directly to your Mac as well. Um, let's see, watch OS 10.4, uh, you get tap to show full notification settings now allows you to double tap to expand notification using Apple Pay with Confirm with Assisted Touch will require a passcode for additional security and will not support double-clicking the side button. So um, basically, it is a Assisted Touch for accessibility features. But if you want to add extra security to your Apple Watch, you can turn this on. And instead of just double-clicking the little button, you have to enter a passcode to confirm that you, in fact, want to use Apple Pay. Mm. Um, everything else is just bugs and fixes. And then HomePod 17.4. This is interesting because typically with uh, HomePod, no, it's with AirPod. I'm sorry. I was going to say with AirPod, they really don't tell you what's in the firm, firmware, but I got that confused with HomePod. With HomePod 17.4, enables you to learn, enables Siri to learn your preferred media service so you no longer need to include the name of the media app in your request. So hmm. for instance, if you're a Spotify user, you know, you want to say, hey, play exercise playlist from Spotify. Mm-hmm. Now, if you do that enough, Siri will learn that, okay, Terrence uses Spotify all the time. So now I'm just going to play Spotify. So next time I can say, hey, Siri, play my exercise playlist. It'll automatically go to Spotify and do it. Okay. Yep. Yep. So that's pretty much it. Uh, any one of those features that you're looking forward to the most or uh, interested in trying out? Nah, not really. Because my home pods, I don't know. Yeah, mine too. I have a love hate with them. <laughs> Two of them yeah. are, are pretty good. The third one is just like she is on her own thing all the time. She'll pick up something from <laughs> something talking on the TV. Oh, you wanted to know about XOD? No, I didn't. That wasn't my voice. <laughs> wasn't me. Wasn't me, girl. Sometimes she wants to play. Sometimes she does it. So I'm just, yeah. Yeah, my thing is is two major issues. Number one, my main HomePod in our kitchen. Every time I ask it a question or something, it's like, please turn on personal requests. I'm like, I've done that 50 million times. It's on. Right. And then number two, <laughs> um, the trying to always play music and i tried mm-hmm. you know you, all you should be able to do in theory you should be able to hold playing the music on my phone i should be able mm-hmm. to hold my phone over the top of the home pod it lights up does a little like that right, mm-hmm. and seamlessly transfers the music to the home pod it's not seamless it don't do that it, it, don't it do stutters that. It, it it thinks about it a little bit but I'm going to have to give it a try because I'm thinking my guess is, and I made the mistake of doing this and I don't feel like changing it. When I first got HomeKit, because I use HomeKit for lights, I use it for thermostats, I use it for a bunch of things. 
when I first set up HomeKit for my house, our family, we have a family Apple ID and a family iCloud account okay. that I set up all the home automation and I set up all the home pods under this um, family Apple ID. And the only device in my house that uses that same family Apple ID as the main Apple ID mm -hmm. is an iPad. I don't have any computers, you know, all the other computers, all the other Apple devices in our house are registered to that person. So mm. my iPhone, my Mac, my iPad, my Apple Watch are registered to me. Mm. Same thing with my wife, same thing with my kids. Mm. Well, the HomePods and HomeKit are technically On registered or owned one. to the family one. Mm. This iPad was super old. It was like an mm. Air, iPad Air 2. So recently for my daughter's birthday, I got her a new iPad. I took her old one, which is way newer than the the family family one, and um, added that one, and then deleted the old one because I'm gonna sell it or recycle it or whatever the case may be. Once mm -hmm. I did that, I was able to update to the newer version of HomeKit, which enabled everything. So I'm hoping all all the way around the world to say. I'm hoping now that my home pods and my home kit and my home automations are now stabilized to where now I haven't tried it out yet because I just mm. set it up and went away. But I noticed once I did everything, it was like, oh, you're on a new operating system. Do you want to up update home kit for a better whatever experience? I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. And then I put it down and left. <laughs> so mm. I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> so I'm hoping with this new update to my home kit and to my home pods, and the new now, iPad. Yeah, and the new iPad. Now I it'll when I say it uh, you know, give it a, a command or request, it'll know it's me because the personal request thing will stay on versus staying on yeah. for a little bit and then turning off. But I digress. Yeah. So <sighs> disappointed with HomePod Mini. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I said, I'm hoping it gets better, but I'll keep you posted. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next story. It looks like Apple Savings has stepped up its game to where now. If you want to, you can hold or save up to $1 million in, in the Apple savings. Now, the benefit of doing this is you get that high APR. I think Apple is mm -hmm. one of the ones that's up to like, I want to say, yeah, I think. yeah, four four point five percent And they kind of teeter between 4.25 and 4.3 and 4.5. But I think right now it's 4.5. There aren't too many banks out there that's offering anything higher than 4.5. At one time, it was 5%, but they kind of fluctuate. It was right? like, nah. <laughs> yeah. So that's the benefit. If you want to rack up a bunch of free money, that ideally- you're going to get taxed on later. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I'll, I'll take the tax. <laughs> if, I can, if I can make a whole bunch of money yeah. off of a million dollars without doing yeah. anything, I'll do yeah. it. If that means I'm going to get taxed. The negative part of adding a million dollars in your Apple savings account is anything above $250, $250,000 rather, is not FDI insured. Yes. So, nope. on, yeah, so FDIC only insures up to $250,000. What that means is if you put a million dollars in your Apple savings and somebody gets to it, however they get to it, if they do get to it, you can only get $250,000 back. So I would, and this is with any bank. This is just not with yeah. Apple Savings. Because I was like, it's all of them, right? They have yeah, a cap. Yeah. yeah, all of them have some sort of cap. And typically it's $250,000. So don't think you're getting over by moving all your money into Apple Savings. Keep it spread out. Keep it dispersed. And if you can, if you can help it, you know, yeah. I I ain't got it like that. So <laughs> I ain't hit the two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Not yet. We we, <laughs> we we ain't there yet. We are gonna get there. But, we're not there but yet. But if though. you if you do got it like that, you know, you might want to put two hundred fifty thousand dollars here, two hundred fifty thousand dollars there, so on and so forth. So you can you have some some coverage if something happens. Yeah. So just want to let folks know that if if you do it, that's your thing. But don't say we didn't warn you. <laughs> All right. So another big story is like we uh, alluded to it in the pre-show is Apple on the low, low key unveiled new 13 and 15 inch MacBook Airs with the M3 chip. So you get 
fast, faster performance, faster Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi support, and something that I'm surprised I didn't know about until I ran into the issue. Support for up to two external displays. I did not realize until I bought my wife's M1 MacBook Air. I was like, oh, I'll save some money, you know, and get her an M1. I think the M2s were out. So I mm -hmm. got her M1 MacBook Air in her office area where she works. She has two displays. And I went to plug up her M1 MacBook Air, and I swear, I spent the better half of a day trying to figure out why I could not get her two displays to light up on her MacBook mm -hmm. Air. Doing research, I'm thinking about spending an extra $250 on these extra docks to where they you can run this extra software in the background and do all these things. I'm trying mm. to figure it out. And I'm like, you're not going to beat me. I'm going to get <laughs> these two. I'm going to figure it out. Yeah, I'm going to figure it out, right? I'm the Apple dude. How can I not figure this out, right? You won't beat me. <laughs> right. So doing research, research, research. And then I read that the M1 and the M2 chips do not natively support two external displays. Now there's workarounds to do it, but you got to install this software and you got to buy this specific dock and you got to do this and that and the third. And I'm like, I ain't doing all that, you know? So now that these M3s- Wait, so the M1 and the M2 don't- So I, when they did the announcement, I could have sworn, unless they were, maybe they're talking about the, maybe I'm thinking about the Mac Studio. It's the but studio. But they said you could do up to four. Studio, you can do it. But okay. no- M yeah, yeah, that is the exception, but no M1, M1s or M2s uh, will be able to, the M3s now, and even when, even when the M3 MacBook Pros came out, they didn't support two external displays, but Apple must have figured something out now to where now you can do the two displays on the M3 MacBook Air, and I think they're grandfathering in the M3 MacBook Pros. So okay. you know, if you do have a MacBook Pro and it's an M3, um, definitely be on the lookout because you should be able to with this new, I think we mentioned it, Mac OS, what is it, 14? Sonoma, 14. Yeah, 14.4 Sonoma. You should be able to now update your MacBook to where you can now connect two external displays. So that's kind of the main thing I wanted to talk about with the MacBook Airs, they come out with the same colors. They've got that silver, that typical Apple silver, and then they've got that midnight, which is that really, really dark, dark, dark blue color, which almost looks mm -hmm. black. Uh, the main thing about that is, according to Apple, it won't be as finger fingerprinty as the <laughs> M2 MacBook Air. Uh, my homegirl, Stephanie Humphrey, uh, aka Tech Life Steph, she bought a M2 MacBook Air maybe a couple months ago. And she was commenting, lamenting about all the fingerprints that you get, you know, mm -hmm. with that uh, device. So it looks like Apple has figured some stuff out and now it is not as fingerprinty as the previous Thanks. version. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I'm not going to go through all the features of the 15 and 13 inch and the 15 inch MacBook Air, but just know lighter design 18 hours of battery life better wi-fi more performance of course you know apple has all the graphs that says oh it's two or three times better than whatever the case may be so mm -hmm. um does two external external displays move you to where you would maybe move off of your m1 pro and get an m3 air when considering the m3 is faster than all the other previous generations you and I both got MacBook Pros because we run the podcast and we do video editing, yada, yada, yada. But mm -hmm. now since the M3 is out, that probably compares, if not is a little bit better than the M1 MacBook Pros, would you consider, and it's got external displays, would you consider getting, uh, jumping to this? Or are you fine with what you got? So I, I was considering, um, because I have the 16 inch and it is huge. Mm -hmm. um, I, before I was considering getting a smaller Mac mm -hmm. um, because of the sheer size of the 16 inch and trying to take it somewhere and kind of making the 16 inch like my desktop, quote unquote. Um, so I don't know, I may be open to it. I just, 
I really want um, to see what they're going to do um, if we're going to get any new um, iPad Pros. And if we do, then that solves that. I'll mm-hmm. get a Pro. But if not, I, I'll I'll consider getting a um, a 13 inch. The only thing is, I don't. It only comes in this silver and this blue. I like the black. Um, mm-hmm. I think the last new. Um, I think the the M3 Pros were released while I was in Italy, and I went mm-hmm. into an Apple store in Italy and kind of played around with it. And I really like the black. Um, so if I don't know with this air, well, the pros, I like the pro line better, but, um, the, the pros have black. So maybe, uh, I'm, as you can tell, I'm kind of waffling, but <laughs> it, 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 it has potential. It has okay. potential. So, yeah. Uh, so I really don't care all that much about ex- uh, two external displays because I, in my work area, I've got one big display. I think it's like mm-hmm. 27, maybe mm-hmm. 32 inches. I can't remember. That's enough for me. Uh, my mm-hmm. wife, she really, really, really needs, <laughs> based on <laughs> her, her ex- yeah, I'm not going to get into her explanation, which is it's just stupid, but <laughs> she needs uh, two displays and her- um, Her laptop, laptop display. And her laptop display. So that's the, that's the kick that I didn't mention this. With the two external displays, your MacBook has to be closed in Top clamshell down. mode. So it can't be three. It can only be- your laptop display and an external display or two external displays with your laptop closed. So yeah. just make a note of that. So I typically run in my workspace. I close my MacBook display and use my one monitor so I can conserve desk space because where I work, I don't have a lot of space. Mm-hmm. Um, so I really don't care about the external displays. I do like the fact that it's smaller, thinner, and lighter. I have um, went into an Apple store as well. And tried the M2 MacBook Air. The M3 MacBook Air looks the same. It's just got the M3 chip. But I like the size of it. Like I said, 16 inches is dope. But like I said, I keep mine closed anyway. So I really don't use the 16 inch all the time. So I could go down to a 15 inch. But the MacBook Pros have more ports. They've got the HDMI ports. They've got, let me see. I've got three, um, uh, not HDMI. USB-C USB-C. ports, the Thunderbolt ports. And then I've got an HDMI port and I've got the, which I don't hardly use, the SD card slot. When I say hardly, I mean never. (laughs) 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 But I do like the fact that it does have a lot of ports, but I've got this fancy dock to where right now, for, for instance, for this recording, I've only got one plug into it and it handles my camera, handles my external display, handles my microphone, and it handles my Ethernet. So I plug all that into this dock, and then I want to run, want run one cable into my MacBook Pro. So technically speaking, I could get away with mm. a M3, 15-inch M3 MacBook Air, but I still like the fact that it has multiple USB-C ports. I yeah. think it maybe have one, one more USB-C 3, which is a Thunderbolt port, than the M3 MacBook Air, but don't don't hold me to it. I may have to look that up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know the Air. I had an Air before, and it was convenient when um, I was in grad school. But um, it was like like you mentioned the port situation. It just it just it, it just wasn't <laughs> it wasn't enough, and the hard drive space. It was just it just right. it wasn't enough. It it just wasn't so, so that's my kind of downside with with the air. But um, now that it it can it the the multiple screens can go back to the um, M3 Pro, then mm-hmm. you know that may be able to to look at it. Oh. And I'm actually I just have one I have like one big monitor that mm-hmm. I use too. It's like a thirty two I think it's pretty mm-hmm. big, but I want to get like one of the curved ones. Right. So. Right. It's not really one of those things where it's like, I have to have it, especially the screen that I have is pretty big. And I usually keep my laptop up. So I kind of have a second one. Mm -hmm. Um, So things that I'm not actively working on is usually on the smaller screen. And what I'm actively working on is on the bigger screen. Um, So yeah, so it's not one of those things where it's like, oh my God, I need to have it. I must have all the displays. Mm, Not really right now. All right. All right. Well, 
Uh, this may change your mind. Um, Apple has increased the amount that your MacBook Pro may be worth. They have uh, increased some of the trade-in prices to where now, let's just say, since we both have MacBook Pros, I'll highlight this one. Uh, Apple will give you up to a thousand dollars. Well, I said that, but then I read a little bit more. I'm like, man, eh, that ain't that much. So <laughs> MacBook Pro now gives you up to a thousand dollars as a trade in for something else. But that's only an increase of ten dollars yes. <laughs> since the and, last time. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I'm a notorious Apple hoarder, so I'm not a huge trade in person. Mm -hmm. I just hoard all the stuff that I don't use. I don't know why, but I do. Yeah, no, I sell mine or trade it in. Most of the time I sell it um, because selling it to, you know, somebody else will get you a little bit more money than trading because Apple is trade notoriously yeah. stingy with their trade-ins. Stingy. Yeah, but of all of the MacBooks and the Macs, it looks like the one that's got the biggest bump is the Mac Studio. So if you trade in your Mac Studio for something else, they'll give you uh, up to 13, a little over $1,300, which is a... $245 difference. So everything else is just like anywhere from $10 to $100. The Mac Pro and the Mac Studio, which is the ones that give you the most difference than previous. So mm -hmm. if you are interested in getting that new M3 MacBook Air, uh, you may be able to get a little bit more if you decide to just be hassle free. That's the benefit of trading it within with Apple. It's just hassle free. If you're trying to sell it on your own or list it on eBay, it's the worst, the worst possible <laughs> experience. I say that I've said this before. I'll say it over and over and over again. You will get more money if you do sell your old stuff, whether it be a Mac, iPhone, whatever the case may be. If you list it on, if they still doing Craigslist, I think people are still doing Craigslist. I think they do Craigslist. Uh, Facebook Marketplace. The market. Um, there's an app that I use and I can never remember the name of it. It's called mm -hmm. offer up. That's the name of it. Dealing with people is the absolute worst. Yeah. There are memes, there are, uh, TikTok videos and people do, uh, they do the, um, kind of like a, what do you call it? Dramatization. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't think that's the word of it, but anyway, dramatization, yeah, that's dramatization, word. yeah, to where they kind of simulate you talking to somebody else <laughs> on Facebook Marketplace, and the person will be, "Hey, is that still available?" And you'll be like, "Yes, it's available." And they'll show the other person driving away in their car, <laughs> <laughs> and then they'll ask you fifty million thousand questions: Is it blue? Yeah. Is it red? You answer all the questions. They're like, "Oh, like, where you look?" Everything's in the listing, right? Right, and you say, "Okay, well, all right." And they'll say, "All right, well, where are you located?" I'll be like, "Well, I'm." in you know atlanta and then they drive off it's like sorry that's too far for me you know or somebody will be like um uh i live an hour away can you meet me it's like no no <laughs> <laughs> come, if you want it you have to come to me so you have to come to get it but but the only benefit of going through that rigmarole is you will get a little bit more money if you sell it yourself versus trading in but like i mentioned before apple is super hassle-free when you trade it send it to them so you may yeah. want to take that hit price wise to have a hassle free experience. Because time is money. Mm -hmm, absolutely. All right. So the next story I got is Apple is hit with a two billion dollar fine in the EU. And it looks like it's all because Spotify is upset that Apple is restrictive in how Spotify tells people that you can get a better price if you subscribe directly through Spotify versus subscribing through your your iPhone, for example. Mm -hmm. Most people, you download an app, you finally subscribe to it. Apple makes it super easy for you to subscribe to an app, to a service in the in your app via your iPhone, iPad, via your Apple ID mm -hmm. versus you can actually go to like a Netflix, like a Spotify and su and subscribe on their website at uh, Spotify is claiming and the EU kind of sided with Spotify that let me just read the whole thing. The European Commission's competition head announced the fine saying that Apple violated antitrust rules by not permitting developers like Spotify to inform users in the app store 
that there were other options other than going through, for instance, in Spotify, going through Apple Music, right? So mm-hmm. according to Spotify, Apple was not letting them through the App Store say, hey, you can subscribe via you know the Apple Music, but also if you subscribe through Spotify, we'll give you 2% off or 2% discount, or we'll give you free trial for 60 days. So Apple was saying, I mean, Spotify was saying, hey, we need to be able to inside the app store, mind you, inside Apple's properties, <laughs> we should be able to tell They want to be people, able to market their products <laughs> right. there's a direct competition, basically. A direct, a direct. Spotify <laughs> is a direct competitor to Apple Music, but Spotify is upset that uh, Apple won't let them tell Apple's customers that, hey, if you don't become an Apple uh, customer anymore, we'll give you a discount. What make the, it make sense. Where in world does that work? <laughs> where? I don't know, but Spotify is becoming like Facebook slash meta where it's, oh, it's not fair. It's not mm-hmm. fair. It's not mm-hmm. fair what you're doing to me. You're not promoting my products, even though you're in direct competition with me because users use your products. They should be, they should know everything. They should, you should, you should uh, advocate for us. No, that's not how any of this works. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So Apple did respond and they, you know, pretty much, you know, kind of pointed out that, you know, Spotify really doesn't pay Apple to be in the app store in the first place. You would think Ooh. we always hear, we always hear about this 30% tax mm-hmm. that Apple takes from developers, 30% tax, 30% tax. Would you rather mm-hmm. have 30% of 70% of something or 30% of nothing? That's the whole mm-hmm. 30%, 30%. Apple's like, and I'm just going to read this um, part that I found in Mashable. It says, taking things even further, Apple points out that even spot, even though Spotify doesn't pay the company, Apple has worked with Spotify to make sure their app works with Siri CarPlay, Apple Watch, AirPlay, widgets, and more. Apple mentions that Spotify utilizes its tools like Test Flight and Apple's APIs and that its review team frequently expedites reviews of Spotify mm. app updates in the Apple Store at Spotify's request. Apple also seems to not so subtly point out that Spotify has some monopolization related problems of their own, saying that the music streaming service has 56% share of Europe's music streaming market, more than double their closest competitors. Despite that success and Apple's app, st- app store roles and making it possible, Spotify pays Apple nothing. Hmm. So in addition to not being taxed like everybody else, Apple kind of moves them to the front of the line for Spotify all Spotify of- is just being greedy. <laughs> that's what it sounds. Look, look, you read into it however you want to read into it, but that's what it sounds <laughs> like to me, you know, and so- Greedy boots. Uh, yeah, we were talking about this on the Tech John. That's my other podcast that I have with uh, Rob Dunwood and Tech Like Steph, Stephanie Humphrey. Um, Rob made a good point. Spotify ain't upset that um, Apple is monopolizing and not allowing Spotify to let users know that they can get a better deal if they subscribe directly through Spotify. Spotify is upset that they can't charge their customers more because we are so used to subscribing within the app store. Because if we subscribe within the app store, like I'm a spot, let's say I'm an Apple, you have a Apple user and Mm -hmm. I decide to subscribe to Spotify within Apple music, right? Or Mm -hmm. the app store, right? I subscribe, they Spotify charge me whatever dollars a month to use their service, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm doing that, and most custom, a lot of mo- let's say most 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 people. most people with iPhones are subscribing within app stores because it's so convenient. It's already linked. I don't have to do no extra. It steps, lists right? all your stuff in your subscription section. I, all that easy peasy. I, I can cancel at any time. Yada yada mm-hmm. yada. Make it super easy. If most people are doing that, Spotify can't control can't control all of their customers. And you know what subscription services are doing now? What's Netflix doing? What's Disney Plus doing? What's HBO Max? What's all? They running up the prices. Spotify can't control their customer base because all the Mm -hmm. customers are in Apple. 
And Apple is used to, we are, as Apple users, are used to this specific set of uh, features and benefits mm -hmm. that Spotify can't compete with, so they can't run up the price. So imagine if mm. everybody moved from Apple to Spotify and we all went, canceled our subscriptions in Apple, went to the Spotify website and signed up. Guess what Spotify is going to do? Run up the price, just like every yeah. other subscription service, just like, like Amazon, just like they can't do that because all Apple has all their customers. So that that's what I think they're upset about. So I just want to. Interesting. Make well, <laughs> if I were Apple and they were trying to make me pay this $2 billion, I would take Every single preferential treatment that Spotify gets, I take it all back. Mm -hmm. You want this $2 billion? You want to be able to say, oh, you saved $2 over here? Let me snatch these, mm -hmm. all these benefits, mm -hmm. make you pay, mm -hmm. and uh, see how you like that. And, and then the what's going to happen? They're going to have to up their prices. Mm -hmm. But now you got all these people in your app, and they're like, wait a minute. Now this is super expensive. This is, wait a minute, this isn't, mm -hmm. this isn't what <laughs> uh, you told me I was getting. Right, and right. now you got an even bigger problem and you're going to have people leaving Spotify, going to maybe Apple Music or even Tidal because Tidal just announced they're dropping their price in oh. the opposite of what everybody's doing. Their $19.99 tier, it's dropping down. It's just one tier, $10.99. So- okay. Title is doing the reverse of what everybody's doing. And if you think about it, it's kind of smart because if people right. say, oh, I'm going to save money, right, a whole $9, and it's cheaper than everybody else, let mm -hmm. me slide over here to see what Title got. And Title pays its artists more than the other Apple mm -hmm. Music, services, Spotify, yeah. and, and all the other streaming services. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, I, if I were Apple, I'd call Spotify's bluff and really give them something to complain about yep. because it sounds like they got it good and they're just being greedy. Well, I mean, greed and capitalism, you know, they go hand in hand. So, yeah. you know, ultimately this is two ginormous companies crying and complaining about billions of dollars. Um, right. Apple Apple is contesting or appealing this two, $2 billion, you know, settlement. If they lose the appeal, Apple might just do what you mentioned, you know, and then we'll see you know, how Spotify moves and how they think to where they get pushed to the back of the bus when yeah. they need to implement something. But that and that goes to Apple's complaint that there are a lot of people who use Spotify. So Apple wants to make those people happy, which is why Spotify doesn't pay that 30% tax or doesn't pay close to if they do pay it, they don't pay what everybody else pay. They probably got their own little negotiated rate of maybe 10 or 12% if they are paying something, right? And they're getting all this preferential treatment. Yeah. You know, Apple Apple may have to rethink that if they lose this appeal, but we time will tell, you know, how this goes because this ain't over. <laughs> yeah, not by a long shot. All right. All right, moving to second string, it seems like... Um, Elon is doing what Elon does. Oh, God, and uh, back when he purchased Twitter, now X, for what was it, $44 billion or something? There were a couple of executives that were working at Twitter that held his feet to the fire to pay that full $44 billion or $45 billion. Remember mm -hmm. when he was trying to buy it and then he was like, nah, 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 I ain't trying to pay. Change my mind. Yeah, I want to pay less or whatever the case may be. There was a couple of executives that held his feet to the fire and made him pay that full $44 billion or whatever the what case may be. He said he was going to pay. Right. Soon after he acquired it, guess what Elon did? Fired all them folks. Yep. <laughs> Got rid of all of them. Um, one specific uh, CEO, Parag Agrawal. Um, and a couple other ones. So when he fired them, of course, Elon being the petty man that he is, four former Chad. executives, including ex-CEO, are suing Elon, alleging that they're owed over $128 million in severance. Yikesy, yikesy. Right. So Elon, I think, mentioned it. I don't know if he mentioned it on Twitter or it was reported that Elon said, I'm going to make y'all, yeah, here's what it says. It says, the lawsuit quotes that Walter Isaacson's biography of Elon Musk quotes Elon Musk saying he would hurt every single one of them, or every single one of them, meaning Twitter's C-suite 
till the day they die. So I'm See assuming. See the mafia or something? Hey, I the don't hell? know. <laughs> I don't know. But I guess he's standing on business, as the young kids say. And when he, when he fired all of those um, executives who made him pay all that extra money, he decided he was going to hold their severance, which they are legally entitled to. So I don't know how right. he's. How he's been how, able to get away with it so long. Right. So he's got away with it, apparently, so long so that they've actually had to sue him. So uh, here's another passage. It's not just three executives who haven't gotten their separate pay, severance pay. Monk, Musk has faced several lawsuits from former Twitter employees who are also waiting for a check. Under Musk's ownership, the company has stopped paying rent, even stopped paying rent on some of his offices, which has led to even more lawsuits and evictions. So I don't know what kind of, I mean, we know what kind of ship he's yeah. running over there, yeah. but it's just sad. Like your boy. That, yeah, it's just sad that he is that petty that he would rather go through the courts and drag this thing out versus pay paying attorneys, them to pay lawyers. Right. When ultimately he's going to have to pay these people the severance money, he may be able to skate around the rent and stuff, but mm -hmm. severance is federally right. protected. It's only so much time, friend. Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's just waiting, making them wait is his method of hunting them to maybe. the day they die, or maybe until the day that the courts is like, man, right, give them their money. Give these people your money. <laughs> Give it. Hand it over, buddy. Yep, yep. So that's on top of the, uh, this is not in the show notes, but I just thought I'd include it anyway. That's on top of a judge ruling that the black employees that sued. Oh, from Tesla. Yeah, the, yeah. the Tesla factory in Texas, I think it was. Mm -hmm. There was a bunch of black employees that sued, uh, wanted to sue Tesla for racism, discrimination, you name it, right? A judge is hanging, all that stuff. Right, right, right. Um, a judge um, approved that the class action lawsuit now, it kind of morphed into a class action lawsuit, can now go forward. So now they can like officially start this court case to see if they can, you know, um, sue Tesla for discrimination. So yeah. it's crazy. All that to say, it's just crazy how, how's he, I would be have ulcers. I would be losing sleep if all this stuff was happening at the same time. But I ain't a billionaire. You're a reasonable. So. <laughs> well, I was like, you're a reasonable man, yeah, and that's, that's probably why he's a, he's a rich white dude. Yeah, um, his whole life. So right. he's never had anyone hold him accountable for anything. He's been able to weasel his way out of doing what's legally required mm -hmm. of him, and honestly, what's decent. Um, and in order, similar to his boy, um, who has all these judgments and stuff against him. So, you know, how yeah, they say birds we, of a feather. All right. Which we will talk about. Uh, we'll talk about it right now. Moving on to for the culture. Uh, I don't necessarily want to talk about the lawsuits or anything, but I want to talk about his supporters. His supporters have decided they're going to use AI to create some black friends for Donald Trump. So if you haven't heard my African-American over there, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, Trump has always felt like, you know, the black folks got his back. Right. And I mean, there's a little bit of shred of evidence to that in the 80s and 90s. Sure. Right. Because he was right. a Democrat back then. Yeah. All the rappers, you know, Trump was the guy. So a lot of the rappers have uh, lyrics, you know, mentioning I'm rich like Trump, you know, something to that yeah. effect. Yeah. Right. Uh, when he was president the first time, he had all those black pastors and oh, preachers God. who went to the White House. Laying hands. Oh, laying hands so on him. You know, you had Kanye West, you know, was his number one friend right back in the day. The first his time. His number one African-American. Right. So fast forward to recent events. Trump um, launched some sneakers, Trump sneakers. And apparently a couple of sneaker heads got a hold of them, apparently liked them. You know, I didn't hear all, I didn't hear a lot of love for them, but no. enough people liked them to where, um, um, it got a little traction. Yeah. got a little traction so much. So to where I can't think of the guy's name. One guy on Fox news was like, you know, Trump, this is Trump's he's, he's culturally relevant 
with the black people as it relates to sneakers. Like we all was just going to fall for this. You know, the dope. blacks love sneakers. Love sneakers so, right? hey, like let's do one. Like we the only people who wear tennis shoes. <laughs> right, right. So and the only people that are sneaker heads. Yeah. We're the only people that are sneaker heads, right? Yeah. So that's that was him um, congratulating Trump on being able to get in, tap into the, to, to the, the black, black culture because sneakers, which is so disrespectful number one but that's not even the subject right (laughs) that was recent so i don't know if that was like a springboard but it seems like uh, i'm just going to read this thing the bbc is out with a new report this week on trump supporters who've been using artificial intelligence to generate images of trump appearing friendly with non-existent black people (laughs) there's been multiple i think two or three pictures going around mm-hmm. um you know we'll we'll put the link in the show notes so you can actually see the different pictures one picture that i'm looking at right now is a, a picture of trump and he's surrounded by what looks like a i want to say black women sp- specifically uh but there's a couple of black men in the background but mm-hmm. He's got he's got his arms around them and they're posing for this picture. Smiling. And apparently AI has gotten so good that I don't know if they think we were gonna fall for this. I don't know if they I don't under well, I get what Look they, at the fingers. The fingers always tell the story. Yeah, they can't the, get fingers right in AI. And if you right. zoom in on the picture that we're looking at, the uh, fingers are all jacked up. Right, right, right. But I guess I was looking toward the the goal of this. Do they do they Think that less of black folks yes. that a couple of pictures was going to turn the tide and get him a large enough percentage of the black vote that that would then elect him president yes. is pictures with black people and sneakers enough. You think that less of us that we, yes. you would deep fakes. <laughs> It's, it's just they don't just, they don't think of us as human. They don't think of us as intelligent people. So they think that the other thing is the sneakers, the AI pictures, and the other thing is he's talking about. You know, I have all these indictments against me. This is Trump saying this. Oh so yeah, black part. people yeah, are yeah, yeah. black people are. They relate to me because I got all these we charges. All we all in trouble. I got these charges, and they're 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 uh, bogus charges. You know, black people are always saying that they got bogus charges. So that's mm-hmm. what you know. The blacks they like me. Uh, because they like me about because of that. They because think, we're all getting discriminated against yeah, together. They think <laughs> that we are criminals that we are stupid and we only care about shoes and we only care about superficial things like showing black people with his arm around them. I don't, I know how they got to this point because again, they don't think very highly of us, but I think when he had Kanye, he had all those black rappers, he even got the idiots over at the breakfast club you know, and those pastors. So you get a small enough band of people that are loud enough, Mm -hmm. it appears as if it's a a sentiment. You got Charles Barkley going on talking about how, you know, he couldn't, he was dying to vote for Nikki Haley and how, you know, Biden hasn't done anything for black people and how black Mm -hmm. people just in droves leaving the Democratic Party to go over to Republicans. Again, a small few of seemingly influential, you know, I'm just gonna say it, bottom of the barrel, black mm-hmm. people who don't speak for the the larger audience right. are black people. Mm-hmm. But sure. you see a black face, a black face that is famous or um, notable. And then, you know, again, they think so less of us if this black person, and it's usually black men, you mm-hmm. don't see this happen with black women so much, mm-hmm. but it's usually black men. And they're, you know, saying this, you know, black men are uh, oppressed and Trump is being oppressed with all these charges and they're wearing, you know, his mugshot on t-shirts to them. If this small amount of people who are visible mm-hmm. and who have a platform are saying this, mm-hmm. then hell, this must be, they're speaking for all black people, right? Yeah. That's and, how and this works. And there have been some uh, black people, you know, who have trumpeted or who have expressed 
not necessarily support for Donald Trump, but like said, well, I can I see it. Well, I ain't got a, he, I Trump all right with me. There's one uh, um, video of a black lady who was talking in response to the stimulus checks mm -hmm. that Trump gave out, gave out that he didn't know, want to. Right. That he gave out. And, then, you know, the person was asking, well, what do you think about Trump? You know, now that you got these stimulus checks or whatever the case may be. And she was like, well, Trump, all right with me. So I don't know why they again. Well, I do know why, but you it's perplexing yeah. that they was like, yeah, this will work, you know, and it's just like, wow, that's yeah, you're that's really stupid. telling me you're yeah. really telling me how you feel about us. Yeah. And that as if you don't already know, but. That should you're saying enrage, the quiet part out loud, right? That should enrage. enrage more people yeah. to it all. yes, you could argue that Biden's handling of the um Ukraine, giving them all that money to Ukraine, mm -hmm. you could argue that the current issue in Palestine versus Israel, that his handling of that is kind of sus. You know, you could argue that he's old. <laughs> you could make all those arguments. There are a lot of valid points. But at the you same time. You don't have to time, make up stuff. <laughs> right. But at the same time, I wish the Democrats would do a better job of arguing all the benefits mm -hmm. versus always responding to stuff like this. Yeah. It seems like the Democrats are always on the defense and say, oh, those are fake images. And Oh, how dare y'all uh, kowtow on to Trump because y'all like sneakers too. And oh, how dare y'all think that stimulus checks was enough to get y'all to vote for Trump. And instead of responding to all that, I would much rather the sh Democrats that are in charge of strategically propping up Biden as is your next president. That? Is there anybody doing that? Well, I would just wish they'd do more of it. I would just wish they would like really... Like, like I, as much as, you know, as, as crazy as some of the stuff that's come out of the Republican party, they're mm -hmm. all in on it together. Yeah. They're all in, they all have the same bullet points. They all say yeah. the same thing over and they over. Are and over and over. They, they are united and they always have been. That's they, how they are getting this stuff done that they are getting done. I would just wish these the Democrats strategically would do the same thing, you know, instead of always reacting. They're trying to but, take this high route. That that that, that ship has long since <laughs> sailed since the orange one got into office. But right. I'll, I'll also say it says a lot about the Democrats as well how they um, care about our vote. And when I say our, I mean black people. Right, right. Um, it's just a given that right. you know black people are going to to vote for the Democratic Party because why you know the Republicans are so bad. And, you know, that's yes. that's what their expectation. They don't think right. they have to put in the work Equally to enough effort keep to, our vote. Right. right. Because yeah. what else are we going to do? Right. What else? What are our other options? What are we going to do? All right. And so they do that. <laughs> yeah. Make that mistake if you want to. We'll have yeah. President Trump for a second term uh, going forward. So And he will probably never leave right. yeah. Yeah. once yeah. he but gets it, back in. All right. yeah. But at least we'll have some nice sneakers. <laughs> yeah. That are horrible. Yeah. All right. Enough of that. Enough. Enough of that. Enough. Poo -poo, yeah. Yeah. Boo boo boo. <laughs> we're gonna tomato, move into. Tomato, tomato. Yeah. We're <laughs> gonna move into the hookup. Uh, and this week, I've always talked about tips to improve battery life because it seems like with every iOS update that comes out, there's always people complaining. Oh, iOS. What's the new one that's out now? iOS 17.4 has drained all my battery. You always hear stories and stuff like that. Well, if that's the case, or whether or not that's the case or not. Uh, I learned that there's a new way that I use a lot that may be draining my battery that I've decided to turn off. So that's my hookup for the week. Turn off Hey Siri to improve battery life. There's a feature that came out to where you don't have to press and hold the button on your phone. You don't have to press and hold the button on your watch or your Mac. You can just say, Hey Siri, and she'll always be listening. Well, she's always listening, waiting for those prompts which will drain your battery. So turning off that feature, hey Siri, and just pressing the press and holding the button when you want to invoke Siri will give you some battery life back. So that's my tip for the week. If you're fig trying to figure out all ways to improve battery life and you use Siri a lot so much so to where you had that feature, hey Siri turned on, go turn that off. You may be able to get some battery life back. Nice. 
All right. So, Nika, if that's it for you, I think that's going to do it uh, for this week's show. So tell the folks where they can find you. You can find me at Tech Savvy Diva everywhere. And you can find me all over the Internet at Brother Tech. That's B-R-O-T-H-A-T-E-C-H to find out, to learn more, to subscribe, to give us a review on the show. Please go to the website. If you go to snoboscast.com, you can get all those details in addition to learning how you can support the show financially. So until next week, I think <laughs> we are out. <laughs> Peace. Bye, everybody.